Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today I want to talk about what to do when bass disappear. What do you do when a bass ghosts you? Stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by the Bass Hat, which is the hat I'm wearing right now, made with a unique wooden bass patch on the top. If you want to click the link below in the description, you can pick up one of these hats and greatly help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. More than likely, we've all been there. Whether you're just the non-tournament angler who likes the fish or you're a tournament angler who likes the fish, maybe you've been in a position where you found some fish in practice, you go back during the tournament and it seems like they are gone. It seems like they're nowhere to be found. The fish are just out of there or maybe you're a pond fisherman and the day before you were catching bass on a certain bank or in a certain area and you go back to that same area and they're absolutely gone so what do you do what do you do when bass seem to disappear what do you do when bass ghost you today i want to give you five different tips that i think will drastically help you to catch bass when it seems like they've disappeared so here's the thing a lot of times when we think that bass have really disappeared found them in practice or you found them the day before you go back to fishing and and it seems like they're gone. A lot of times I've found that the fish actually aren't gone. So the first few tips are going to relate to what you can do to actually catch fish in those same areas. All right, so tip number one is switch up your angle. Us as bass fishermen, we always kind of get conditioned to doing things the same way. Maybe we caught fish down a bank on a certain lure going a certain way. Then it seems like every time we go to approach that exact same bait, we do the exact same thing. We're flipping up at the same exact lay downs. We're casting here, we're casting there. Or maybe you're fishing offshore or maybe you're fishing an offshore hump and on the hump there's a certain sweet spot and you always seem to attack it from the same angle because that's the way that you've caught them there in the past you switch up the angle instead of going down the bank the way that you always go literally just start going down it the opposite way what this is going to do when you're fishing at the bank is it's going to present options to you that you've really never seen for instance maybe there's a couple of lay downs on the bank there's a couple of different angles that you are now going to be able to hit those lay downs that maybe you couldn't do them by fishing the other way all the time. Simply switching up your angle is literally going to present more areas for you to be able to catch bass on that same stretch of bank. Same thing if you're fishing offshore guys. When you're fishing offshore the bass can get really accustomed to seeing lures and baits thrown at them from the exact same angle. A lot of us when we fish offshore we're typically sitting in deeper water and we're casting kind of up onto that piece of structure you're kind of in the shallower water and dragging our bait down. Simply again, switch up your angle. Instead of going from deep to shallow, sit up on top of the structure and cast out to deep water and drag your lure up. This simple change in angle can literally be huge when it comes to catching more bass in the same area. Because again, a lot of times when we think bass have disappeared, maybe it's just because we caught the certain fish that were on those laydowns in those certain areas. But if you switch up the angle, you're going to be able to catch different fish that you couldn't get to coming from the other way. All right, guys, that one is huge. Let's talk about tip number two. And this is also a really, really big one. So for instance, you're going down a bank and maybe you found some fish in practice for a tournament with a spinnerbait. You're throwing a spinnerbait up at laydowns and along the bank and you're catching fish on a spinnerbait. And you come back during the tournament and guess what? You pick up that spinnerbait and you go down the bank and you're not getting bit at all. So tip number two is throw in opposite lure. And what I'm gonna talk about when it comes to opposite lures is really if you think about lures, there's really two different categories of lures that we have. We have horizontal lures and we have vertical lures. You have lures that run horizontally. I'm talking jerk baits, crank baits, spinner baits, chatter baits. Those are all lures that run horizontal and then you have vertical baits these tend to be lures like soft plastics and jigs okay so those are kind of the two different lure categories that we have so tip number two is throw the opposite if you found them fishing a spinner bait maybe instead of throwing a spinner bait pick up an opposite lure pick up a jig Maybe you find that bass are actually reacting better to a jig today than they were yesterday. Or maybe even it's a switch in the morning, right? You might catch them real early in the morning on a spinnerbait, but you come back later in the day, they won't touch a spinnerbait. 
you pick up a jig and it could be vice versa and this happens a lot of times is you actually find fish flipping laydowns maybe you're maybe you're flipping and using a soft plastic beaver style bait you're flipping that bait all over the place you're catching fish in the tournament there's a lot of people around you and everybody is flipping right they're all flipping the trees they're all flipping the same trees and in this case you pick up a square bill or you pick up a chatterbait something that's a little bit different right it's an opposite lure now that lure is running horizontally as opposed to the vertical lures that everyone else is using so now you start catching fish on that bait because it's something different these tips are going to seem really easy but it's just something that a lot of us as bass fishermen don't think about on the water right we get accustomed to catching bass a certain way or on a certain bank or offshore a certain way all it takes sometimes is doing a simple lure change throw an opposite lure throw an opposite color that's another big one. All right, guys, so let's talk about tip number three. And this is actually kind of the same order, the same progression that I go through out on the water. I typically switch an angle first. Then I might switch up a lure, do a vertical lure versus a horizontal or vice versa. The third thing that I like to do is pull out the spinning rod. Try to finesse these fish. A lot of bass fishermen like to throw big jigs, big plastics, big crankbaits, big spinnerbaits, all these bigger lures. But if you pull out that spinning rod and maybe show that fish a drop shot, or maybe show that fish a Nico rig, or maybe show that fish a Ned rig, it's gonna be something that those fish may have not seen in that area, and that's going to trigger you getting more bites. Try to finesse those fish. You might be in an area where a lot of other guys are fishing, and everyone has hit that area with spinner baits, crank baits, they flip jigs in there, they flip plastics in there, but all of a sudden you show them that little bitty net rig. It's just like a little chicken nugget that just falls from the sky to these fish and they're like, ah man, that looks just too good not to eat. And they just, they get over there. It's not overly aggressive to the fish. It looks like an easy meal to the fish. And because of that, you're going to get more bites and you're going to get bites in those areas where you thought the fish were completely gone. I have literally seen this be the difference of getting zero bites and getting a ton of bites. When you simply pull out the spinning rod, get some light line, get some finesse gear out, and start finessing these fish. It's going to help you get a lot more bites, especially in areas where there is a tremendous amount of fishing pressure. So tip number three, finesse these fish. All right, guys, now we're getting into tip number four, and these next two tips are what I would call pretty juicy tips. So make sure you pay really close attention to these. Tip number four is move in or move out. Let me explain. What I've seen a lot of times is fish will position just a little bit different on cover when you have a lot of fishing pressure. Now that could be fishing pressure from yourself, that could be fishing pressure from other anglers fishing the same area. That fishing pressure will actually move fish. You know, those bass literally can feel that pressure. They know if they're kind of in the stereotypical area where you think that you're gonna catch them, sometimes simply those bass are either gonna move into the cover or they're gonna move out of the cover. So say for instance you're fishing a lily pad field. You get into those lily pad fields and maybe the first day that you're there or even the first couple of hours out there you're catching them in the stereotypical area. You're catching them right on the edge of the lily pads. You're casting a chatterbait, you're casting a spinnerbait, whatever it may be. Maybe you're just flipping the very edge of the lily pads and you're catching a ton of bass and then sometime throughout the day or again maybe it's the day after that the fish just simply disappear it's like where did they go did all these fish get caught in this area more than likely not a lot of times you think that these fish make these giant moves but really what i have found is that sometimes bass just move in a little bit or move out for instance that pressure might move those fish that are on the edge of those lily pads they might move them way up into the lily pads. So instead of being on the edge in that stereotypical area, the area that everybody is fishing them, those fish are now in the thickest cover that they can. They have moved almost all the way to maybe the bank in this case. And that is where you're gonna find the fish. They didn't make a big movement. They simply just got in a little bit thicker cover. So you might have to change up your approach in this case. Instead of throwing that chatterbait or flipping on the edge, you might have to get a little bit heavier line and flip way up into the lily pads and try to get those fish out because maybe they're now on the bank instead of off the bank. This can also be the exact opposite. Maybe you have fish that are right on the edge of the lily pads 
and they might just kind of move off of the vegetation completely and just be off of the cover. Everyone is fishing the cover, everyone's fishing the lily pads, and what you find is that the fish are simply like six foot, seven foot off of the lily pads. I've seen this happen a lot in Florida. It's like you're fishing Kissimmee grass, for instance, and all of a sudden you're flipping the Kissimmee grass, the edge of the Kissimmee grass, you're catching fish, and it seems like the next day they're gone. And sometimes where your boat is sitting and where you're flipping is actually where the bass are. So instead of casting into the grass, you just have to cast on the outside of the grass and you're gonna start catching more fish. The same thing can happen if you're fishing, for instance, maybe like a lay down on a bank. Maybe you find one day that the fish are really shallow. You're, you're flipping a jig or casting a spinner bait up real shallow and you're catching a fish. And the next day you come back through and guess what? It seems like, again, those fish are gone, right? But no, they made a simple move. Now, instead of being real shallow, they might have just suspended on the end of the tree. Or maybe they found a stump that's off of the end of the tree and now they're just positioned out, right? They're positioned in a little bit deeper water. A lot of times we think fish make these great movements and sometimes they just move in or they just move out. That is a huge tip. I can't tell you how important that little tip is. So when you're out there fishing and you feel like the fish have disappeared, remember, move in or move out. All right, guys, now we're down to the last tip. And this is another really juicy tip. This tip is gonna require a little bit more thinking on your end. For this example, I wanna use a creek channel bank. Say you're fishing a creek channel bank during the spring. This is a bank that the, the creek channel literally runs up against. It's a great pattern to fish during the spring because fish are gonna use that creek channel as basically a highway as they're moving in and out of creeks during the spawn. Now, one day you might find fish and you're fishing that creek channel and you start catching fish, maybe just hopping a jig down that creek channel. The next day you come back, you can't get bit. You can't get bit on jig. You tried everything. You tried switching the angle. You tried an opposite lure. You tried finessing them. You moved in, you moved out. They're nowhere to be found. This last tip is really, it's really a mental thing. You have to think, where are these fish going? Where are they going? Where could they possibly move to? If they are, if they have completely vacated that bank, where did they go? For instance, in the spring, you have a lot of change. During that pre-spawn, bass are wanting to move shallow. Maybe you were catching them on a creek channel bank and now the days have started to get longer, the water has started to warm, and those fish simply move up into a bay to actually start spawning. And they may have not moved far, they may have just moved just around the corner and right into one of those pockets, and maybe if you just move right into that pocket, pick up a wacky rig or pick up a jig and start flipping those lay down, you're gonna find that those fish that were on that creek channel, overnight they just moved right up into those little bays, right into those little coves, and that's where all the fish are. So you have to always be thinking, where are these fish going? Another thing could be kind of the opposite. What I just talked about was fish that were going in. Now maybe they're coming out. Maybe they've spawned, they're on those creek channel banks as they're swimming out. You go to that creek channel bank, you can't catch them. Maybe those fish move to the closest secondary point as they're moving out of the creek. So instead of all those fish being on the creek channel bank, now they're on that secondary point and maybe you have to pick up a deep diving crankbait or a big worm or a jerk bait and you can start catching the fish that you were catching on the creek channel but now they've simply just moved so guys you always want to be thinking where are these fish going where are they going what are they doing all right guys so i hope you understand a little bit better what to do if a bass disappears if the bass goes to you if you guys enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up please comment below if you have any questions and please subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video